Всем привет, добро пожаловать на YouTube канал Вул Хоккей. В этом видео мы посмотрим первый матч финала Кубка Канады 1987 года между сборными СССР и Канады. Трехматчевая серия в финале Кубка Канады 1987 -го года многими считается одним из лучших хоккейных противостояний в истории, ну или по крайней мере в 20 веке. В состав сборной Канады входили 12 будущих членов Зала Славы, в том числе и Уэйн Грецкий с Марио Лемье, находящиеся, можно сказать, на пике своих возможностей. Советская сборная также была невероятно сильна. Вячеслав Фетисов вместе с Алексеем Касатоновым в обороне и легендарная тройка – Владимир Крутов, Игорь Ларионов и Сергей Макаров в атаке. Это было последнее противостояние двух хоккейных сверхдержав перед распадом СССР. Последняя битва добра со злом. Именно так окрестила эти матчи защитник канадцев Ларри Мерфи. Канада и СССР пробились в финал, переиграв в полуфинале сборной Чехословакии и Швеции соответственно. Очная встреча соперников на групповом этапе закончилась со счетом 3-3. Учитывая битвы на турнирах Кубка Канады в 1981 и 1984 годах, сборные успели отлично изучить друг друга. Первый матч прошел в Монреальском форуме 11 сентября. Mesdames et messieurs, comme c'est la coutume au hockey international, les capitaines des deux équipes procéderont maintenant à un échange de cadeaux au nom de leurs équipes. As it is the custom in international hockey, the two captains will now exchange gifts on behalf of their teams. Ron 
Belarus, Dan Kelly at the Forum in Montreal, the Soviet Union, and Canada. Sergei Milnikov starting in goal. A 4 0 record and a very impressive 175 goals against average. Grant Pure, four victories and a tie and a 2.67. The end of the Doyle or goaltender starting for Team Canada tonight. And the starting lineups for the game. There you see the way they'll line up the so called green unit for the Soviet Union, centered by Larry Onov, Reski, Messier, Gartner. Up front for Team Canada, Bork and Crossman on the defense. Powerhouse on both sides. <coughs> Don Koharski ready to drop the puck and start game one of this best of three series. In round robin play, these teams played a tie at the Cops Coliseum in Hamilton. Here we go with Gretzky against Lariana. Game one is underway, and Bork fires it off the boards down into the Soviet zone. Batisov back to get it, and as soon as he touches it, it's an icing goal against Team Canada. And the faceoff comes all the way back into the Canadian end of the rink. There's Sergei Svetlov. He has a broken arm, suffered in the first shift of the game the other night, the semifinal game. It's nice of him to stand up and show us his broken arm for us. A fine young player, and uh, in the second intermission, we're going to have Sergei joining Dan Matheson to talk to him. He's just a terrific player, and one of those players I think that we're going to see a great deal of in the future, especially coming up with the Olympics. Claude Lemieux, Kevin Deneen, Rick Tockett are the injured, but Tockett is in the lineup tonight. Svetlov has been mentioned along with Kromchuk for the Soviet Union. Face off. Deep in Team Canada's own, we played just six seconds. Larry Onoff against Messier, who won the draw. Bork flipping it up. Makarov knocks it down, and back goes number 11, Mark Messier. To Doug Crossman, number two. Ahead to Bork, number seven. Feeding it to Mike Gartner, number 12. And that's Batisov coming up to break it up. Now Bork intercepting the pass. Batisov knocks it down for the Soviets to Krutop. Bork back for Canada, and as he tried to clear it, it went off Krutov's stick, and Pure had to catch it and held it. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. There are the two semi-kindly coaches, Mike Deenan, or Keenan rather, and of course, Viktor Tikhanov, who's been under fire in the Soviet Union. His team is not winning. And when you're under fire by former superstars like Alexander Yakushev and Anatoly Pearsoff, I guess it's like being coach of the Montreal Canadiens and having Rocket Richard on your back. Uh, it's a little tough, so he's a little tentative as far as his position is concerned. Here's Canada with Coffey feeding Gretzky. Gretzky dumping it in. Musarov back to try and clear it, and here's Beckhoff, number 27, over to Homotop, number 15. He drops it to Stelno. Shot behind the goal. Now Lomaka, number 23. Got it in front, cleared away by Coffey. Sutter trying to get it out of there, held in by Stelno, centered, and that shot blocked in the slot area by Coffey. Here's Gretzky to Brent Sutter. Canada on the attack, back to Gretzky, pass through the crease, and the Soviets come back, but Coffey with that speed, able to come back and break it up, and then as he cleared it in, it's offside at the Soviet Union blue line. Great play by Coffey coming back. He left the ice during the pregame ceremony. He's got some problems with his skate or his padding. I don't know what it was. He went back to the dressing room. I'll tell you, it can't be the skates the way he flew on that last shift. He was down in deep, came back and broke up a play, and eventually sent it back into the Soviet zone to cause the offside here. Tempo of the game very high early, Dan. No score. We played a minute and 20 seconds. Here is the Soviet defenseman for Bukin firing it out to center. Now Canada coming back. Here comes Mario Lemieux, shoots one. Wide of the net, Gartner in to chop at the rebound, but couldn't get it in Samak, beating it into center ice for Lomaka, number 23. He's upended by Rochefort, number five. And this is Rochefort carrying to Mario Lemieux. Into Gartner, shoots, he scores! One by Rochefort, and then this little tip ahead for Gartner, who got the 
march on the defense. Уже на второй минуте встречи канадцы вышли вперед. Отличился Майк Гартнер с передачи Лемье и Рошфорта. 1 1-0. And it's Patrick trying to get it out for Canada. Couldn't. Batisa lifted in front. Blocked by Doug Gilmore. And then Gilmore able to poke it up on the wing. And then he finishes it off by clearing it to center. And Chinov back to his own line. Here are the Soviets now with Himalap shooting it in. Back is Paul Coffey. Quickly out to Patrick on right wing number six. Now back to Murphy. Patrick, by the way, is playing up as a forward tonight because of... Uh, Injuries to right wingers like Bob Lemieux and Kevin Deneen. So it's Gretzky out there with Gilmore and Patrick as a forward line. Now here's Priyaka moving it in on left wing. Shot nowhere near the net by the Soviets. Canada trying to get it out. Howard Chuck dropping it back for Bork. Here's Bork to Gretzky. Gretzky on the fly as Anderson with him. Gretzky. Bumped by Kozatonov and knocked off the puck. Gretzky back up. Taken out again by Kozatonov. And then upended. And the Soviets come to center. Krutov, number nine. Leaving it for Makarov, number 24. Back on the point. Gusarov check. Canada trying to break away. But Gusarov will get a penalty here for pulling down. Glenn Anderson. It'll be a holding call. This is the Lavac Canada Cup. On CTV. Kusarov forced to take a holding penalty as Glenn Anderson was trying to break out of the zone, and he had a bit of a jump on the defenseman. So he just hauled him down rather than let the, the break occur. Kazatonov is one of the strongest men in this tournament. There is no penalty on this, but watch all of this now. He goes down earlier, just prior to that, he took a pretty good hit from Kazatonov as well. Not used to getting roughed up like that, but again, he's a hard guy to catch, and that's one of the reasons. Canada with the man advantage. They've had seven power play goals in this tournament, and 24 chances. Uh, tournament leading 29% with the man advantage. And Canada with the first man advantage of this game. Here's Makarov trying to work in. Taken out by Bork and Paul Coffey. Has it for Team Canada, giving it to Bork. To Mario Lemieux, now to Messier. With Gretzky, back to Lemieux. Shoots, big save, Melnikov. Gretzky after the rebound. But the Soviets are able to clear it out of there. And then Messier pounded. Krutov into the boards with a heavy check. Going back is Gretzky to Bork. Bork over for Coffey, now to Lemieux. To Gretzky. Gretzky, cross to Messier, back to Gretzky, backhander, just went wide. Pretty, pretty passing. Krutov clears it. Canada with a minute 10. Left in the Soviets' penalty. Coffey into Bork to Lemieux, but it's offside at the Soviets' blue line. Gretzky got a little bit of a jump on the far side. Fans didn't think so. I think they were looking at Lemieux, who take, took the pass. So it's still 1-0 Canada. They continue on the power play. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Well, there's big Mario Lemieux. He's already got a point in this hockey game. It looks like he is right on it again tonight. I'll play him left wing right now. That scoring play was Gartner from Lemieux and Rushford. 149. Canada with a minute left. In Gusarov's penalty, still with the man advantage. Here is Bork to Messier. Mark Messier speeding in. Leaves it for Gretzky. Trying to drop it to Bork. Bork against Bekov in the corner, and Batisov clears it into center ice. And here come the Soviets. One-on-one -on -one with only Coffey back. Homotop, number 15. Sidesteps Coffey, beats Bekov, number 27. Mario Lemieux trying to tie him up. Batisov moving in. His shot hit Bork. And Canada's Messier firing it out to Gretzky. Long pass to Lemieux. Too far for him. Lemieux racing in. 
against Fatisov. Now Lemieux gets it to Gretzky. Gretzky checked by Bekoff, and here's Fatisov into center ice with Flomakin. Fatisov overskated the puck, and that put the play offside at Team Canada's blue line. Ten seconds left in the penalty. Now well, Mario Lemieux right up there at the top of the scoring race in this tournament. As a matter of fact, with the point, he has now tied Gretzky for the tournament lead. His first Canada Cup has been a brilliant one. I think all reviews have been very positive. Eddie Johnson saying the other night that he thought that Mario Lemieux's presence here is helping him just to be around this type of player to recognize what leadership means. <laughs> and he has certainly taken over the role along with Gretzky for Team Canada. Still 10 seconds left in the penalty to Gusarov. Howard Chuck ready on a face-off against number 30, Semyonov of the Soviets. Soviets get it, trying to carry in. Semyonov flipped it in. Now Goulet on the boards, trying to get it out. Well, Makin is checked, and Goulet breaking out with Anderson and Howard Chuck. Michelle Goulet dumps it in. And the Soviets now back at full strength. Gusarov just out of the penalty box trying to clear it. Here is Anderson for Canada. Round on the boards. Howard Chuck into the corner to Goulet. Goulet back for Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck to Craig Hartsburg at the point. Scoops it to Goulet. And Goulet taken out by Semyonov down in the corner. They do some grinding on the boards. Third over onto the other side. And over to get it is Stelnov, who carried to center ice. Now Semyonov. Pass went off a skate. Picked up on the far side by Pakota. He shot it in. Now Semyonov digging in to try and center. And Anderson has it for Canada. Glenn Anderson just cleared at the center. Here's Gilmore running into Padota. Gusarov is back after it. Gusarov passing to Priyakin. Headmanning it. In across the line. Humalap shoots one. Another shot. Your stop them both. Another shot. Rossmore blocked that. And then cleared it out. Batisa into center ice to Humalap to Priyakin. And Gartner back checking broke it up. Gilmore tries to clear it, does. And then Rochefort shoots it down the ice. Here's Gemchinov over to Patisov to Priyakin. Picked up now by Humalap, leaving it for Nemchinov. Nemchinov, number 12, shoots off a stick and high up into the crowd here at the forum. One to nothing. Team Canada leading on an early goal by Mike Gartner. Well, some great plays made by Armand Rochefort early in this game. Here's number eight for the Soviet Union, Yuri Humalev. Plays for the wings of the Soviet, which means he's play, he played for and was coached by and brought up in the game of hockey by Yuri Dmitriev. Take a look at the rush just a couple of moments ago that started all of that problem in front of the net. These guys got such great speed. He's fought his way past the defense. Deflected shot that caused Pure a little bit of a problem. Now, watch the great play by Rochefort as he cleared that out of harm's way. A good start for Rochefort, who made two crunching body checks in his last shift. Also has an assist, and that save in front of the net. It's a nice way to start a hockey game. Canada from the faceoff. Try to clear it, and they do, and it's cleared up over the glass by Doug Crossman. Now, for the Soviets, as you look at Viktor Tikhonov, problems all have started at goal. There's just no way you, you replace a Vladislav Tretyak. There may never ever be a goaltender of his quality in the game. That guy is just kind of filling skates that are about 10 sizes too big for him. Here is Bork for Canada leading a rush to center ice. Fires it in. Messier and Gartner charge in after it. Here's Messier taking a man out of the play, but the Soviets now drop it back, and Fatisov cleared it right in front of his own net to Krutov, trying to feed Larionov, but it was too far. And Bork is back, and Fuhr lifted up on the wing for Crossman. Crossman failed to get it out. Now Bork will carry it up. Here's Bork with a long shot to dip. Rebound to Anderson, and he fired that one as Anderson went steaming in after it. Here's Makarov, Takasa Tonov, number seven. 
He flips it in. Crossman back for Canada. Off the boards for Brent Sutter. His pass to Messier. Messier flipping it in for Sutter. Brent Sutter into the corner with Gusarov. And Gusarov does a good job as he took it away from him. Beats Krutov and it comes to center. Larry Murphy for Canada. Played it off the boards. Knocked down by Krutov. Back he comes. Trying to go around Murphy. Murphy poked it away. And Gretzky comes up with it. Feeds Michelle Goulet. Leaving it for Gretzky. Gretzky now to Goulet. Now to Lakoff. Had it under his pad but looked in behind him. He didn't know where it was. And it was under his goal pad. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Dan, you spoke of Milnikov not knowing where that puck was. I don't think that Goulet really saw too much of it either. Some great moves inside the line by Gretzky. And then he slipped it through. Goulet doing what he's supposed to do. Go for the net, look for it. He came by him, and he just got a tip of his stick on it, slid it in there. Milnikov a little lucky, but Goulet is getting the redirection. That's enough. He'll get a shot on goal. One to nothing, Canada leading. Here's Gretzky on a faceoff. Backhander that's blocked, and back comes Poma top number 15 for the Soviets. Trying to get it to Kaminsky. Gretzky back checking, breaks it up, and here's Gretzky, Poppy trailing. So is Goulet, pass to Goulet, just tipped by Bekov, and the Soviets come back. Poma top number 15, firing it in front for Bekov. Murphy tied him up. Now Gusarov, a drive, pure, stick save, bouncing puck, still loose. Centered by the Soviets, a backhander by Bekov. Big save, pure, and a penalty coming up here to Canada. And in front of the net, a holding call against Team Canada, and the Soviets will have the man advantage coming up right here and heading to the penalty box is Brent Sutter, number 21. Well, this started when the defenseman, Coffee got caught up ice, and it caused all the problems when you had Sutter playing defense back there. Sutter's trying to hold the man behind the net, and he finally says, there's only one thing I can do here. Boharski looking but right at it. it. He just tackled him, is literally what he did. Sutter, but that's the situation you don't like to see, is a forward having to he play defense, skating backwards into his own Brent zone. Sutter. Things tend Good to go awry. Seven this program is protected by copyright. Any use of this telecast without permission is prohibited. Well, the Soviets will be going to the power play, their first of this game. They're five for 18 with the man advantage, a 28 percentage with the May power play. And here's Doug Gilmore for Team Canada, out killing off the penalty, shooting it down the ice. Kasa Tonop back to get it. Kosatonov's pass into center ice. Picked up on the fly by Samak. Flowering it in for Lomakin. He couldn't get it. Now on the board, Semyonov, number 30. Back to Patisa, to Kosatonov. Shoots, he scores! Deflected on the way through. Kosatonov let it go, but it changed directions. This game is tied 1-1. Changed directions, I think, off Gilmore, who was the high man trying to block the shot. Here it comes as it comes to the point. Watch Gilmore move out towards the point. And as the shot comes in, I think it changed direction right there. I don't think the man in front of the net got a piece of it. На десятой минуте матча после удаления Сатера советская сборная сравняла счет. Шайбу забросил Алексей Касатонов с передачи Фетисова и Семенова. Один-один. Tisov gets an assist, as does Semyonov. Kasatonov getting the goal, his first of the series. Here's a breakaway for Priyakin, but Rosbor able to get back and get some help from Krek Hartsburg, and it's cleared up on the boards. Canada working it into center, Lemieux to Gartner, who has had Canada's goal. He fires it in. Gartner on the boards, taken out. Gartner continuing to battle. And it's cleared out of there by the Soviets. Here into center ice is Himalev. Number eight to Priyakin. Priyakin dropping it to Larianov. Soviet changing on the fly. Larianov to Kasatonov. Shooting wide by a couple of feet. And Fatisov will have to chase back for it. 
for the Soviets. Batisov to Makarov. He has Krutov with him. Gives it to Krutov. Back to Makarov. Deflected. You are the save. Our Chuck cleared the rebound. Held in by the Soviets. Now center to Makarov. And a good defensive play by Howard Chuck to break that up. Centered. And they fan on it. And here comes Messier. Three on two. Canada break. Messier to Coffey. Fires. And off the blocker of Milnikov. Then into the corner. Soviets trying to work it out. And they do. Larionov, number 11. Feeding it through to Krutov. Saved by Pure on the short side. Just got his glove on. And Coffey. Passes it out on the wing. Picked up by Anderson to Messier. And Canada dump it in. Gusarov back for the Soviets. Over on to Podokov. Held in by Canada. Shot right on. Milnikov a save. And Anderson was knocked down before he could get the rebound. Soviet shoot at the center. Here's Bork to Crossman to Goulet. In to Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky for Canada. Firing it over to Bork. Bork shot. Comes in front. Milnikov out to clear it. And Kamienski breaks down right wing. Only Crossman back. And Crossman makes a good play to break that up. Here is Duck Crossman from the Philadelphia Flyers to Bork. Less than eight minutes to play in the first period. A 1-1 game. Bork to Sutter. But it's offside at the Soviet blue line. This is the Labatt. Canada Cup on CTV. With Ron Roos, Dan Kelly at the Forum in Montreal. 1-1 the score. Gartner early for Canada. Hasatonov tied it on a power play at 9.34 here in the first period. Here's Craig Hartsburg. Backhanding one down the ice. Prop going in to get it. Get some help from Gartner. Now back to Prop. Samyanov took it away from him and tried to feed it into center ice. Hartsburg to Mario Lemieux. In the prop. Back to Lemieux. He's checked and Samak trying to get it out of there to Samyanov. Back to Samak, number 18. He moves in. And is checked before he could make the play. Hartsburg knocking it off the stick. Gossetonov back to get it to Lomakin. Now to Samyanov. Into Samak, number 18. Hartsburg takes him out nicely. Buck still loose, however. Soviets, Lomakin trying to get it in front. Brian Prop intercepts. And now back to the play in the corner. Hartsburg tying up a Soviet player. And he'll get a penalty. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Craig Hartsburg protested to Don Koharski, the referee, that he was hauled down first. If so, then he got nailed for retaliation. Well, there's a pretty good piece of holding, and finally he just hauled him down. So on the holding, Hartsburg goes off, 13.06. Soviet scored earlier on the power play in this game to tie it. Now they have the man advantage again. SCA and Gartner will be the penalty killers up front. Messier will take the face off against Kruta. The green unit, as it's called by the Soviets. Larionov, Makarov, and Krutov up front. Kasatonov and Batisov, the point man. And the puck is cleared by Canada immediately down the ice. This is Batisov. Headmanning it to Larionov, number 11. Bork tied him up, and there's Gartner giving it to Messier. Messier to Gartner. Gartner moves in. Big shot. And he blasted that wide of the net. And the Soviets larry on off to Makarov, number 24. Has Krutov with him. So is Kasatonov catching up with the play. Here's Makarov. Back to Fatisov in front. Larry Onoff couldn't get a stick on the pass. Here's Makarov to Fatisov. Shot. Fewer the save. Rebound. Krutov scores. Krutov. Two power play goals by the Soviets, and the Soviets take a 2-1 lead. Great moves at the goal mouth by Karutov off a rebound. He seemed to be covered, made the move close in, and then tucked it behind Grant Fuhr, who was playing 
На 14-й минуте периода советская сборная второй раз подряд в матче реализовала большинство. Макаров делал передачу на Фетисова, капитан сборной СССР совершил бросок, Фюр справился с броском, но первым на добивание оказался Крутов, который убрал шайбу под себя и отправил ее в ворота. 1-2. And the thing they, they like to talk about Krutov, the thing they keep mentioning is not only is he a great offensive player with great speed, great balance, all of those things, but he's also a terrific defensive player. Great back checker, plays a total game. Had 50 points in 39 games with the Red Army team last year. Here's Coffey, Canada now trailing. Ahead to Anderson. Anderson in with Howard Chuck and Gretzky. Anderson can't get it back, now Murphy to Gretzky. Gretzky a shot! Stick save, rebound to Anderson, but he was checked by Priyakin before he could get the shot off. And now Fedotov clearing it into center ice. And the Soviets just shoot it to the Team Canada blue line. Coffey giving it to Gretzky ahead for Howard Chuck. Popped over his stick. Here's Fedotov, number 14 to Priyakin. And he clears it into center ice with Murphy back for Canada. Murphy to Gretzky, now to Coffey. Trying to get around Fedotov. Look at Coffey fly. Flips it around on the boards. Home atop there to clear it into center ice. And Patrick number six back for Canada. Patrick to Gartner. Chipped down the ice. And as Pervukin goes back to touch it, that's an icing call against Canada. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. of the Canada Cup. Batisov and Makarov the assist. 13.53 the time. Soviets with both of their goals in the power play and they lead it 2-1. to one. Now Canada with Patrick breaking up. To Mario Lemieux but Bekoff was there to break that up and here's Homotop number 15 to Bekoff. In to Kamienski. To Homotop to Bekoff. Back to Gusarov a drive and Fuhr got a stick on that. And it deflects up into the crowd. Now, the uh, moral of this period might be stay out of the penalty box run. Well, it's an interesting selection of referee, and uh, the Soviets have taken advantage. Here's Canada trying to work it out. Larry Murphy does flip it up, but shot it too hard. Lemieux trying to keep the play on side. Races in, it is onside. Lemieux trying to center to prop. Got it in front, but Semyonov there to clear it. Now held in by Murphy to prop to Lemieux. Can't get it centered in Kasatonov. Flips it to Petisov. Fired it into center ice. Copy there. And now Petisov down on the ice and injured, I think, in a collision with Mario Lemieux. And Petisov is down on his hands and knees. Well, Petisov's all right, I think, but uh, it was right in front of Don Koharski, and now Petisov's pretty upset at Lemieux. He wanted to go after Lemieux. Uh, Mario Lemieux hit it. Here it is here now. He just unloads the puck up the boards. Lemieux had him lined up, and he gave him a good shot. A little elbow in that as well, but the referee was right there, and he didn't see call for a penalty. Insider, and I don't think the T-Soft like that one bit. I'm gonna watch those two the next shift. 403 left in the period. 2-1. Soviet Union. Don Koharski, the referee. Usually in a game such as this, they'd have a, an official from a neutral country, but the Soviets thought a lot of Koharski's work earlier in the series, and they said, let Koharski call it. They had him three times in different games. Said they got a lot of penalties in the games, and according to the coach, they earned every one of them. Here's Goulet in against Perbukin, tipping it into the corner. Goulet and Perbukin battle back of the net. Sutter in after it. Buck comes over onto the other side, and Lomakin 
Now feeding Semyon off number 30. They head on to the wing. Samak trying to carry in. Samak dumps it in and Coffey has it for Canada. Coffey can't get back or get by Lomakin. Semyonov fires it right back in for the Soviets. You're leaving it there and Murphy has it for Canada. Murphy number eight from the Washington Capitals fires it in. Goulet comes in but Gusarov shoots it around. Now Gretzky. Gretzky tied up by Podotov and here's Semyonov trying to break down with Lomakin. Semyonov still with the puck dropping it back. Moving in is Delno, flips it around on the boards. Hartsburg into the other corner, Semyonov all over him. Now Lomakin comes in. We're going to get a penalty here. High sticking, I believe, against Semyonov against Hartsburg in the corner. And it looks as though Team Canada will have the power play now. One of those offensive zone penalties that you hate to have happen against your team. Up against the board, Semyonov in there, and the sticks go up, and the collision right there. And so Canada will get a power play opportunity. The Soviets are two for two in that department. He's showing Marcy, quick with the whistle. Well, they don't give it to Semyonov, they give it to Lomakin. So Lomakin gets the penalty. High sticking the call, Canada. With a power play and trailing two to one, 2:51 left in the opening period. Canada on its second power play opportunity of this game. They're all for one tonight. Messier, Lemieux, and Gretzky up front. Bork and copy the point men. Here's Bork to Messier. Leaving it for copy now to Bork. Bork. Over to Gretzky. Gretzky put it in front. Knocked away by the defenseman Stelnov. And now Makarov cleared it. Lemieux held it in to Messier. Back to Lemieux, but Rooftop puts it. Makarov on a breakaway. Makarov scores! 3 to 1, the Soviet Union. A shorthanded breakaway goal by number 24, Sergei Makarov. Soviets got a man free who had full speed when he picked up the puck. There was no way that the defenseman could handle him. The puck was chipped loose and just flipped out by Karutov to Bakarov. That's right. Чуть больше двух минут оставалось до окончания первого периода, как сборная СССР забросила третью шайбу. Играя в меньшинстве, Крутов с лету перехватил шайбу и первым же касанием отправил ее вперед. Макаров оказался первым на шайбе, убежал от Бурка и мастерски переиграл канадского вратаря. 1-3. It's six of the series. A short-handed goal. Krutov will get an assist. 17:44 the time. 3-1. Soviet Union leading. Here's Crossman to Murphy. Murphy into Howard Chuck, flipping it in. Batisov back to get it. Goulet into Forchek. Goulet tied up by Glenn Anderson. Now Batisov to Bekov. Good play by Murphy to hold it in. Into the corner, they get it back to Murphy again. Now to Howard Chuck, over to Crossman. Tried a centering pass, Howard Chuck into Anderson. Trying to get it in front, now Dale Howard Chuck. Back to Murphy. Murphy to Crossman. Shoots off a stick as Patisov went down and got a piece of it. And it deflects up into the crowd. Well, Mike Keenan was talking before the game and he said, just like Czechoslovakia, the Soviets kill penalties very aggressively. And he said, every game, they get a breakaway on us, and they just had one, and it scored. Well, the speed is what does it, isn't it? If they play that man high, intercepting that cross-ice pass at the point, and that's exactly what happened. It was just a great reaction by Karutov to knock it out of midair and chip it up towards center ice. And then, of course, Makarov, one of the fastest men in the world on the hockey rink. Not much chance for Bork to come back. Here is Bork. Canada still in a power play. Bork shooting one. Rebound to Lemieux. Put it across to Gretzky. It was tipped on the way by. Now Gretzky in the corner. Here's Wayne Gretzky. In front to Lemieux. Big save. Milnikov on Lemieux. Slap shot. Oh, Milnikov kicked out that 
right leg and looked like a thoroughbred there and making that say. Oh, what a labeled shot it was, too, by Mario Lemieux on a great pass from Gretzky, who did a magical job of maintaining. I think that wasn't labeled. That just was reading the play and reacting quickly. There's the great Gretzky pass and a one-timer by Lemieux. One fifteen left in the period. 24 seconds left in the penalty to Lomakin of the Soviet Union. Messier on a face-off against Krutov, who's back out there. Messier getting the draw. Gusarov coming up with it, trying to clear it. Coffee held it in, but Makarov clears it down for the Soviets. This is Bork. Young, 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 stepped young, into young, him and the puck flipped up over the board to see Canada's bench. We're down to 59 seconds left in the opening period. Raymond Bork, who's been extraordinary in this series, he was the one caught, but I don't think it was his fault so much. One of those things that happens when you're on the power play, you're thinking offense, and the puck is chipped up past you at center ice on a turnover inside the zone. Shots on goal, 11-10 for the Soviets, but in the error department, every one that Canada has made has wound up in the net. Here's Makara for the Soviets. They're still shorthanded. Now the penalized player, Lomakin, back on. Frutop with 47 seconds left in the opening period, firing it out into center ice. Three to one, the Soviets lead. Here's Bork shooting it back in. Delnov there, now Gartner, back of the net. Losing it, and the Soviets, Stelnov, number four, carries out. Into center ice, back to Stelnov. Weak wrist shot, Bjor handling that. And here's Gartner, getting it out on the boards. Canada just clear it to center. And it's Gusarov for Priyakin. He gets knocked down. And Canada's crossman with eight seconds left in the period. Fires it down the ice. On goal, Milnikov the save. Brent Sutter a shot. Milnikov stopped that. Krutov cleared it. And there's the buzzer to end the first period. Canada took an early lead on a goal by Gertner. But then power play goals by Kasatonov. And Krutov gave the Soviets the lead. And to add some icing to the cake, Makarov with a shorthanded goal to make it three to one for the Soviets. Shots on goal in the period for the Soviet Union, 12 for Canada, 11. So a tough beginning for Team Canada. You look at Grant Fuhr and Team Canada as they fight an uphill battle now, Ron Roosh. Well, there have been uphill battles in this Canada Cup over the years. Back to 1976, as we look at Karutov, has two points on the night. His teammate, Matisov, nicknamed him the Tank. That's a kind of a nickname that they seem to get in NHL teams as well. He's built like a fire plug, very strong, very, not very tall. He's only about 5'9", but he's got that conditioning and so on that makes him the great international player that he is. Looking back at some of the great games that Canada and the Soviets have had in Canada Cup play in 1976, Bobby Hull scored the winning goal to eliminate the Soviets from the playoff round with a 3-1 victory at Maple Leaf Gardens. 1981, Canada beat the Soviet Union 7-3 in the regular round. Canada scored five straight goals in the third period to win that game. Middleton and Zion, the key goals in that. But then when they got to the playoffs, the Soviets won 8-1 right here in the Montreal Forum, despite the fact that they had a scoreless first period in which Canada outshot the Soviets and Vladislav Trejak 12-4. Then in 1984, the Soviets beat Canada 6-3 to an answered goals by the Soviets. Broke a 2-2 tie, Gimaev and Semyonov, but then in the semifinal, that great overtime game that eliminated the Soviets, Bossy scoring the winning goal at 12-29. See what happens here. Here we go with the second period. Canada getting it in immediately, but Batisov is there. Checked by Howard Chuck. Batisov gets it back, feeds it to Krutov, who... Cleared it out of there, and it will go the length of the ice. Rashford back to touch it, and as he does, icing against the Soviet Union. 
There's Norman Rashford. What a first period he had, especially that first 10 minutes, using his size and his body checking skills and also setting up the first Canada goal. But Rashford is one of those unsung players, plays for the Nordics. Very much appreciated by Serge Savard, who has had to watch him help the Nordics beat the Canadians over various games. And can't see recommended highly that Rushmore be a part of Team Canada. I don't think he's made a mistake at all. Here's Larian up against Messier. Canada winning it. Anderson up backhander. Noel Lacoff caught that and held on to it. And we'll get another face-off deep in the Soviet Union end of the rink. Canada tonight with the injuries to Deneen and to Claude Lemieux. Under man. Rick Tocker is dressed but has not seen action. According to Mike Keenan, he said, we're really going with ten and a half forward tonight. I may just be able to spot talk it here and there. And the Soviets, of course, use four lines. So conditioning as this game goes along could be a big factor. Here's Makarov moving in. Trying to center. Crossman knocks that away. Rashford now to Howard Chuck. Hasatonov pinching in, but Howard Chuck gets it to Messier. Now to Anderson. But Desop cleared that away. And Krutov feeds Batista. He loses to Howard Chuck. Shoots. Oh, and he shot it just wide. A giveaway by Batista, but Howard Chuck just missed. Now Rashford his own line. To Dale Howard Chuck. Now to Glenn Anderson. Anderson got it to the line. No further. Stelnov beating Homotop. Homotop number 15. To Becca. Howard Chuck there to clear it away. And here's Anderson, but Krutov intercepts his pass and drops it back to Gusarov into center ice. Here comes Bekov, number 27. Quick wrist shot. Stick save, pure. Here's Kamiensky, number 13. Round on the boards, Homotov. Now to Kamiensky. Crossman checks him. Working it out, and Sutter shot at the center ice. Bekov back there. Gets it back into the Canadian zone. Shot up ice. Gretzky charging in after it with Stelnov. And Stelnov comes up with it number four. Gretzky stays with him. Steals it. Gretzky center. Sutter took a poke at it, but Gusarov cleared it. And here's Kamiensky. Shoots. He scores! Kamiensky from well out. Surprising pure. And it's four to one for the Soviet Union. Shades of Rendezvous 87, Kambiensky, who scored those big goals in the second game of the Rendezvous Exhibition Series. This one, a shocker. Let it go. No reason in the world is... В начале второй 20 минутки советская сборная увеличила свое преимущество до трех шайб. С передач Хамутова и Гусарова шайбу забросил Валерий Каменский. 1-4 в пользу сборной СССР. I think it did drop on him, and instead of playing the puck uh, to block the puck, he tried to glove it, went right through his legs. Kamiensky making it 4-1. Here come the Soviets again. Semyonov getting it in there. Murphy tying him up. Now Lomakin tied up by Murphy. And then it's cleared up on the boards, and now back of the play, a holding penalty called against Team Canada and Larry Murphy. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Larry Murphy, two minutes for holding at two minutes, 27 seconds. A barrel load of trouble now for Team Canada. They're down 4-1. And Murphy gets a penalty here for tying up the Soviet player. A holding goal. Well, team Canada is going to have to start playing this game like a basketball team that's in foul trouble. They simply cannot get penalties anymore. The last scoring play, Kamiensky from Homotop at 2-10, and Gusarov had an assist as well. That's the goal that made it 4-1. Soviets have a chance here to really put Canada in big trouble if they're not in enough already. Here's Sutter. Fatisov checks him. Now Lariana moving it into Makarov. Makarov for the Soviets. Dropping it to Fatisa. Over to Kasatonov, a drive. Pure save, Larionov. Flips it on the boards. Sutter over to get it. Makarov knocked it away from him, and it comes back to Fatisa. He passed it. Gartner off the bench intercept. He's hauled down. And Makarov will get a penalty. And each team will be a man short now. 
A car up number 24 to the penalty box. Well, the penalties keep coming here. We've had one, two, three, four, six of them called so far. All of the minor penalties. Gartner just hauled down from behind. Right? Gartner's speed a bit. Hooking is the goal, by the way. 310 the time of the penalty. Two minutes for hooking at three minutes and ten seconds. So each team a man short. Four to one, the Soviet Union leading. Canada with Gretzky out there along with Lemieux, Coffee and Bork. This, of course, is a part of the game that Gretzky and the Oilers were so good at before they changed the rules a couple of years ago. Let's see how they make out here. Long shot by Bork off a stick and up over the glass into the crowd. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Exactly the same way in the Soviet Union as you do in Canada. There's Big Patisov stripping the tape off. Here's Canada from the face off. Gretzky side of the net. Behind the net centered. Coffee moves in, shoots. Milnikov a save. And another penalty coming up to Priyakin in front of the net for Decking Lemieux. And Priyakin will go to the penalty box. And it will be four against three on a power play for Canada. Uh, three penalties called in a minute here. Uh, Lemire took a shot or a dive. Let I don't know which there, there, whatever. It drew the attention of Don Kowarski, the referee, and he called it. Ryakin is what high sticking will be the call. There's the president of the National Hockey League, John Ziegler, down in the NHL seats, south end of the forum. Canada with a chance here. Four against three power play. High sticking against Priyakin. 3.27 the time. Canada in this game, 0 for 2 on the power play. Gretzky, Hoppy, Bork, and Lemieux up. All inside the Soviet line. And Coppy couldn't hold it in. Gretzky has to go back near center ice. Into Lemieux. Back to Gretzky to Mario Lemieux. Lemieux centered it. Bork in front, knocked it down, but Bekov checked him, and Gusarov fires it around and down the ice. This is Paul Coffey. To Gretzky, into Bork. Back to Gretzky. Centered it, tipped away by Stelnov, and Coffey has to chase back. Canada with a four against three power play. Here's Coffey, feeding it to Gretzky. Now to Coffey. Into Lemieux. Drops it back and his back pass misses Gretzky. And Canada has to chase back. Cleared up ice. Here's Coffey. Coffey number 77. Checked by Kuta. Held in. Here's Lemieux. Drops it back. Over to Gretzky. Now to Bork. Now Canada with a two-man advantage. Strength, Soviets two man short. Here's Messier. This shot wide. Messier into the corner. Checked on the play by Krutov. Big defensive play there by Krutov. Soviets are two man down. And Krutov carried in, and the play goes offside at Team Canada's blue line. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. short still Makarov will be coming out of the penalty box in 16 seconds 33 seconds remaining in the penalty to Priyakin Canada is a little too anxious I think Dan they're overpassing and trailing four to one at this point Soviets cleared down the ice this is Doug Crossman back to get it Crossman head manning it into center ice to Howard Chuck Howard Chuck over to Anderson Makarov breaks that up now the Soviets just one man short. Here's Homatov to Makarov. And he drops it back into his own zone to Patisov. Flipping it down the ice. Homatov to Makarov around Murphy. Makarov cutting in. Backhander and a glove saved by Fuhr. Now the Soviets are back at full strength. Here's Canada with Anderson bumped by Makarov. Now Murphy 
clearing it up and cleared it up over the boards at the Team Canada bench had everybody ducking there. And he nipped one of his teammates. I think it was Hartsburg. But that puck as it flew into the bench. Got him out of the uh, came out shaking his hand as if it hit him on the hand as he was coming off the bench. As a tone off. Some think that he may be playing better defense for the Soviet Union than Patisov is right now. Zatonov, big, strong guy. Chris Nyland told us today he's as strong a guy as he's ever gone into the boards against. Here's Rochefort for Canada. Teams at full strength. Canada down by three. Trying to battle back here. Rochefort sliding it into the Soviet zone. Cleared out and then carried back in by Tockett, who's on the ice for the first time. And then he gets upended on the play. Tockett's upset at Fedotov, who hit him as he hit the line and dumped him. Tockett still talking. Not going to do you much good to talk to the linesman. Rick. Nice to see it here as he let it go. Then he was hooked from behind and shoved. Tockett bothered by a gimpy knee, seeing his first action of this game. Now Hartsburg for Canada. Over to Rochefort, long shot. Milnikov stops that. And the Soviets try and clear it. Held in by Rochefort. Broken up. Cleared out here is Semyonov. Breaking down with Kamienski. Semyonov a shot. Big save by Bjor as he kicked out his left leg. And Gilmore cleared at the center. Gilmore out there with Prop and Tockett on the forward line. Soviets shoot it in. Back to get it. And controlling it is Rochefort to Gilmore. Gilmore to Prop. Brian Prop with a shot. Milnikov the save. Didn't know where it was for a moment. And an awful collision in front of the net. One of the Soviet players, Stelnov, running into his goaltender, Milnikov. Going to be a penalty. And a penalty talking. coming up. The Tocket? Yeah. This is the Levac Canada Cup on CTV. Nobody has a right to complain about the officiating in this game. Team Canada has earned every one of them. Here's Tockett. The goaltender has stopped play, and he cross-checks Stelnoff right over top of the goaltender. And so, in the end, Canada is shorthanded again. Here is Canada dumping it into the Soviet Union and to the rink. Gusarov back to pick it up, leaving it for Stelnoff. Soviets already have two power play goals tonight and lead four to one. Homotov firing it in. That's pure missing it. Bekov back of the net. Gets it in front to Kaminsky. Kaminsky number 13. Into the side of the goal. Bekov a backhander. Pure grabbed that and held on to it. And we get a stoppage and a face off deep in Team Canada's end of the ring. They always seem to find a way, even knocked off balance, to let the quick shot get away. And that one by Beckroff was a real tester on Fjord. Stelnoff let one go just a shift before that. Beckroff, number 27, right in front of the net. He's going to get the pass off to the side. Here it comes, and that quick shot. And Fjord right there. They know how to handle almost any puck that comes to him. Backhand, forehand, slap shot, wrist shot. Here's Kasatonov trying to center to Makarov. Now Fatisov held it in, but Messier knocked it down. And a Soviet player, Krutov, is flat on the ice and injured. Didn't see what happened to him, but Krutov is face down on the ice. And that's the reason that play is stopped. Another incident behind the play. You see it there. There's the cross check. What in the world are we degenerating to here now? We're that was Hartsburg. That was just a cheap shot. Of. If you think you're going to intimidate these guys, uh, somehow they uh, just don't need to do this kind of thing. Basically, a shot across the back of the neck. That was Krutov. I'm sorry, not uh, Patisov. Take a look at it again. That 
is unnecessary. No penalty on the play. It was behind the play that that occurred, and Krutov going right to the Soviet locker room. Meanwhile, the Soviets continuing on a power play. Tockett with 122 left in his penalty. And here is Petisov to Makarov. Soviets lead 4-1 and operate with the man advantage. Here's Larionov to Makarov. Makarov trying to cut around Hartsburg. Centered it out in front. Larionov had a shot at it. Now Hartsburg comes up with it. He flips it out on the boards. Messier can't get it. By now he does get it away from Petisov. One on one against Casatona. Messier to Rosper right in. Big save, Milnikov. On Norman Rosper who was in alone. What a play Milnikov made. Here's Petisov to Lariana. 38 seconds left in the team Canada penalty. Now Casatona. In for Samak number 18. Sliding it across to Homotop. Copy there to chip it out and get it by Fatisov, who has to chase back. 20 seconds left in Tockett's penalty. Fatisov, round on the boards. Getting it to Samak, who cleared it in to Lomakin, but Lomakin went in ahead of the pass offside at the Team Canada Blue Line. Rushmore had that great chance. That's the one play where you hate to see a defenseman on that play, especially a defensive defenseman. He made a pretty good move for a defenseman, but you'd love to see Wayne Gretzky there instead of Norman Rushmore, with all due respect. We're watching for Karutov, who has not come back to the bench after being taken to the dressing room. Here's Perbukin over to Podotov. Soviets controlling and leading this game. Four to one. Samak number 18. He drops it back. Lomakin. Well tied up by Goulet. Gretzky comes back. And Wayne Gretzky has it for Canada. Teams at full strength now. Here's Gretzky shooting it in. For Buchan back to get it. Canada's Goulet to talk it. Now to Gretzky. Centered out in front. Goulet can't get his shot off. Then when he did, it was wide. Goulet cleared it into the corner. Soviets come up with it, and Lomakin feeding it into center ice for Samak. Back to Lomakin. Murphy there to intercept for Canada. Canada trailing 4-1 to one as Murphy. Headman's it to Paul Coffey. Coffey trying to feed it in front to Tockett. Tockett knocked it into the corner. Now Gretzky knocked away by the Soviets, and Lomakin feeds Semyonov. Only one man back, Semyonov. Trying to drop it to Lomak and shoots, he shot it wide. They went to the trailer on the play again, but they shot wide. Here's Gartner right back for Canada. And now Semyonov has it for the Soviets. They head to Pumalap number eight. Rochefort got a piece of him in the corner. Comes to Priyakin, however. He cuts in front. You're a save. Puck loose, Hartsburg clearing it away. And then Team Canada, fired to center to Lemieux. Lemieux with Gartner. Lemieux trying to get it. And a good defensive play by Stelno. Now Lemieux again. In front, this time Gusarov there to break it up. Soviets can't get it out. Here's Gartner behind the net. Did center. Pumalap is there to shoot it away. And Hartsburg has to go back. Craig Hartsburg for Canada. Passing one, in for prop, down to Lemieux. Lemieux trying to get it in front, but Batisov intercepts and clears it out of there. Now Kaminsky to Bekov. Bekov, wide open, Homotov hit the post. Homotov, in alone, hit the post. Canada come back. Here's Lemieux, but that's called back on a two-line offside pass after a hit goal post by the Soviets. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Here's that cross check again, and Karutov has not come back. Snapped his head back as he cross checks from the back of the head. There is Svetlov in the stands. His reaction to that, as you can see. And here's that post that Homitov hit. 
just to the far side of Grant Fuhr, who I have to say has been under fire in this game. Defense now is starting to open up. Karutov now has made his way back to the bench. He's standing at the end of the bench. This is just one ship. 9-11 left in the second period. 4-1. to one. Soviets leading Team Canada. Here's Fatisov to number 13, Kamiensky. Leaving it for Homotov. Homotov into Bekov. Now to Kamiensky. Trying to center. Howarchuk intercepts. Howarchuk clears it into center ice. Now Bork. To Messier to Anderson. His shot partially blocked by Fatisov. And Anderson crashed into Milnikov. And Fatisov and the rest of the Soviet teammates come to the aid of their goaltender. And Milnikov comes out and has something to say to Glenn Anderson now. As they skate back into a goal race. I think Anderson was shoved into the goaltender in this particular instance. The shot was deflected. Got right on him. And then as he moved in, he's tied up a little bit by... Well, now, maybe I'm wrong, huh? Looks like he went after the goaltender. Well, the team Canada bench. Well, down right now. They, what they desperately need in the next couple of minutes is a goal just to put themselves in kind of a position to come back. A three-goal lead by the Soviets. The way they can play, a tough one to overcome. Let's see what the Gretzky, Takad, and Goulet line can do. Meanwhile, the Soviets clear it at the center. Here's Krutov into Makarov. Trying to center to Larianov. Copy there to intercept. Ball copy. Check from behind. Larianov to Makarov. He slides it into the corner, and Goulet has to go back for Canada. Michelle Goulet, number 16. Trying to feed Murphy, who lets it go. Pocket picks it up, dumps it in. Milnikov flips it away for Bukin. Trying to shoot it out. Now, Goulet getting it into the corner. The Dotop battling there with pocket puck comes to Gretzky in the other corner centered it put it right through the crease and Makarov starts back for the Soviets Makarov feeding Krutov with Coffee back for Canada Paul Coffee from the Edmonton Oilers leading a rush to center Coffee over to Gretzky Gretzky moving in centered it off a skate Krutov tried to clear it Gartner held it in he gets knocked down and Gusarov fires it out for the Soviets. Murphy held it in. In on the boards, Gilmore check. Now shot into the corner and cleared by the Soviets. And they have a two on two break to center. Well, Mackin with Krutov, leaving it there. Gilmore to break it up. And number 28, Doug Gilmore for Canada to Mike Gartner. Gartner flips it in. Gilmore charging in. Nick Stelnov out of the play. And now Semyonov has it. Stolen by Gilmore. He lost it, and here's Lomakin for the Soviets. The Semyonov, but Hartsburg cleared it. Here's Lemieux to Gartner, but Masatonov got back to break it up. To Semyonov, leaving it for Semak, and that shot hit Hartsburg. Lomakin into the corner. Rochbor checks in. Gilmore for Canada. Fires it to center. Batisov intercepting. Now to Semyonov, to Samak off his stick. Hartsburg feeds Lemieux. Here's Lemieux to Gartner. Gartner back to Lemieux, and he elected to shoot, and Milnikov stopped it and cleared it himself to center. Brian Prop to Crossman. Now to Bork, back for Prop, intercepted by Semyonov. Soviets leading 4-1. to one. Samak with a long shot. You're handling that, and Crossman has it, giving it to Bork. Canada trailing by three. Fire it in. Sutter going in to get it. Get some help on the play from Prop back for Sutter. He's pinned in there, centered by Canada, but Priyakin for the Soviets, squeezing Kasatona. Kasatona with a drive. Bjorn made a body save, and Bork clears it out to Prop. Now to Sutter. Ahead to Gretzky. Gretzky stops. Now cuts in front, shoots one. Sutter a whack at it. Gretzky raises the stick as if they scored. Now we have a, an altercation at the side of the net. It's a holding call coming up. No goal. But there will be a penalty. 
This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Fedotov goes off for holding at 14-23. Canada needs desperately a goal. Here's the business in front of the net as Canada put the pressure on. They've had a couple of good opportunities the last couple of shifts. Good effort by Sutter as he just rolls on that puck. I think eventually wound up in the net. But at that point, the, well, now maybe did, didn't Gretzky signaling a goal. I didn't see it go in. In any case, through all of that, Sutter drew a penalty, and Fedotov goes off on the holding. Canada with the man advantage. Here's Coffey at the point, shooting! That's off the glass. Now Lemieux got it in front. Beckoff clears it, and Homotov flips it to Beckoff, but Bork gets back in a hurry for Canada. Team Canada trailing 4-1 and on a power play. Here's Bork. Dumping it in. Mario Lemieux in to get it. Lemieux tied up. Back of the goal for Gretzky into the corner. Gretzky and Lemieux trying to fish it off the boards. But Homotop is there to shoot it out. And Team Canada has to go back. You're giving it to Bork. Now to Lemieux. Delnov goes back, but the goaltender Milnikov did a little stick handling and then decided to freeze it. And that's allowed in international hockey competition. Better part of Valor, I think, in that particular instance. Messier was in there, but also coming in were both Gretzky and Lemieux. And the way those guys could smell out a pass and intercept it. Better just cover it up and hopefully win the face off. Four to one. The Soviet Union leading this one. Mostly on their special team. Something Brad Park mentioned at the beginning of the game. For the Soviets, it's been the key to the game. There's Beckhoff. Little guy. Who... Very important part of this team. Canada is 0 for 4 on the power play, and they've given up. A shorthanded goal to the Soviets. Here's Anderson. Got it in front. A save, and another penalty coming up for the Soviet Union here. Cross-checking penalty, and the Soviets through top to the penalty box. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Vladimir Krutov off for cross-checking at 15:24. Watch to the right of your screen, behind the net. That area is going to produce the penalty, and right there. Bit of a bump and answered in kind, and the retaliation was what brought the penalty. Kind of a breach of self discipline there. But... Canada with a two man advantage. They're trailing 4 1. 59 seconds left in Fedotov's penalty, and now Krutov in there. Here's Gretzky. Wolves in, shoots. Oh, Messier just failed with a tip and try, and then the Soviets clear it out of there. And now back of the play. We're going to get another penalty. A cross-checking call this time against Bork of Canada. Well, there goes the two-man advantage that Canada had. I can't believe the kind of hockey Canada is playing here tonight. It is certainly undisciplined. Get a two-man advantage and then mess it up. Bork is number seven. There it is. There's the cross-check. <laughs> Cross-checking, 15-34 the time. Koharski, the referee. Koharski said he'll let the game dictate the way he calls it. And he's just calling what he sees, and he's seen quite a bit in this game. He's had three penalties called in less than a minute. So now a four against three power play for Canada. Here's Coffey. Feeding Gretzky. Gretzky shoots wide by a couple of feet. And then Murphy at the point couldn't hold it in and has to chase back. Murphy, number eight for Canada. To Messier. Messier gives it to Coffey. He flips it in. Asatonov back to fire it right back out of there. And Team Canada has to retreat. Here's Paul Coffey. 
into center ice. Lemieux couldn't handle it, and Gusarov shoots it away for the Soviets. Now the Soviets just one man short, so each team a man short as one of their penalized players is back on. Here's Crossman taken out by Gusarov and Semyonov back to get the loose puck. Castelno, number four, to Semyonov. Let's a shot go off a stick and up into the crowd. Three seventeen remaining in the period. Mario Lemieux gave Grisarov a bit of a shot coming out of the zone, and Grisarov kind of doubled over. That was more of uh, it wasn't a dive because he didn't go down, but he sure wins. And Mario right now is in a three-way tie for the tournament scoring lead with Gretzky and Makarov. Rudolph right behind now. That's about the way one would expect the scoring race in this tournament would go. The interesting thing is the guy who's nowhere in sight is Larionov, who has not been very much in evidence in this tournament. He has been playing, they tell us, with a what is variously described as a knee injury or a back injury, depending on which member of the coaching staff you happen to be talking to, but they say he is playing hurt. Larionov is. 51 seconds left in Bork's penalty, 41 seconds left in Krutov's. Each team a man short. Here's Stelno into Semyonov to Lomakin, missed him. Gusarov, number three. To Stelno, wide of the target with that drive. Now Semyonov on the boards. He's checked and breaking out is Canada. They give it to the delay man, Coffee, who catches up, carries in. And he's checked, and Lomakin comes back for the Soviets. Number 23, Lomakin. Backhander. Dior got a piece of that with his glove. What a save that was. Back comes Anderson. Into Gartner. Mike Gartner for Canada. Let's the shot go. He's tied up by Stelno, who blocked the shot and now controls it and gives it to Gusarov. And the Soviets come out of their own zone. Soviets back at full strength. Now, Bork comes back on. Canada's at full strength, and it's icing against the Soviet Union. 2.23 left in the second period. It was 3-1 after the first, and Kaminsky has scored here in the second. Play just underway. Kaminsky racing in. Pure out of the net to clear it. Hit Murphy with it. Murphy had to... Slide it aside. Kaminsky knocked it back of the net, and here's Howard Chuck for Canada. To Goulet, now to Howard Chuck. To Murphy with Tocket. Tocket moving in. Shoots one. That's blocked. And cleared into the corner. In there goes Goulet. And he got his stick up, and he'll get a penalty for high sticking. As he and Fedotov had their sticks up, I'm not sure which one of them that. Koharski is sending off. I think it's Fedota. It is. Well, that'd be the initial contact that was called. So Koharski right on top of the play. So the high stick. I thought the Goulet got it up a bit too, right at the tag end of the play. And this comes with less than two minutes remaining. You have to see it again. No job. As Goulet goes in, a little bit of a push there, a little bit of a hook, and there's the slash right across the face, and well, that drew the Godotov penalty. Canada with the man advantage again. Canada 0 for 5 with the power play tonight. And that's something they've been leading the tournament in coming into this game, but the Soviets have killed them off well and have scored a shorthanded goal in the bargain. Well, you can't say that it's been lopsided in terms of the penalties. They've been pretty even on each side. Canada's had some opportunities with two-man advantages. There's Larry Arnoff, and they're working on the, on his legs. Now, again, we heard stories that it was a back injury that was bothering him, but we also had heard that one of his knees was giving him trouble. Canada needing the goal badly. They trail four to one. Howard, Chuck, Goulet, and Anderson up front. Murphy and Bork, the point man. Batisov for the Soviets. Slides it right in front of his own net to number 27, Bekov. And he cleared it down, and Murphy has to go back for it. Giving it to Bork. Back to Murphy. 
Murphy misses Anderson with the pass, but Tsop cleared it. Now Murphy or Bork intercepting. Bork into Anderson, but it's offside at the Soviet blue line. And the Canadians argue about that by the Soviet linesman who whistled that play down, namely Galinovsky. Well, he pointed at Anderson as the man who was offside on the play. He was at the near boards to play on the other side. So, with 130 remaining in the second period, there's Galinovsky. The only Soviet official over here for the tournament, Morozov, who has not got a great many backers here on this side of the Atlantic, was not invited to the tournament. Canada on a power play. Bork feeding into Messier. Messier checked and then Coppy has to backtrack. Gives it to Gretzky. Now to Bork. Into Lemieux. Mario Lemieux on this power play. Back to Bork. Bork into Lemieux. Trying to center. Sliding across and breaking it up with Petisop. Back to Bork again. Return to Lemieux. Behind the net to Messier. That's Kasatonov tying him up. Kuchov clears it out of there. We're on the final minute of the second period. A minute left in Fedotov's penalty. Canada trailing 4-1. Here is Lemieux to Gretzky. Gretzky leaving it for Bork. Shot the score! За 42 секунды до окончания второго периода канадцы сократили отставание в счете. Играя в большинстве, шайбу броском с дальней дистанции забросил Рэй Бург с передач Уэйна Грецки и Марио Лемье. 2-4. Crossman clears it out and Sutter has it for Canada. Now they work it to Crossman. Ten seconds left in the period. Pumalap in there tying up Crossman. Sutter comes back. And they pin it against the boards. It comes loose. And Canada carry out just as the buzzer goes. Glenn Anderson firing a long one. That scoring play for Canada. Fork, Gretzky, and Lemieux, 1918 the time. A power play goal to cut the Soviet lead to four to two. Well, a big goal, as we mentioned. I don't think I've seen the Soviet Union play a more perfect hockey game than they've been playing tonight. They have really shut down Team Canada. But you get a little emotion. Uh, the things now that they're going to be very positive frame of mind in the dressing room, Team Canada. See if they can carry what happened for them late in the period into the third period. 4-2, the Soviets lead after two. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. This Team Canada, the way it is playing, if it just gets its game back together, I, I can't say that the final result of this game is going to decide the tournament. I think Canada can play a lot better. Gretzky with Goulet and Taka to start the third period, and the Soviets immediately clear it down left wing. Here's Krutop to Larionov, cutting in. Larionov, and a diving glove save on the short side by Grant Pure. That may have been a game saver right there as Larionov made a couple of nifty moves. He said he's been practically invisible in this tournament. Watch this move, though, as he comes blowing by the defense. And then a great move, but smelling it out beautifully was Pure reaching back to take it right off his stick. Parler looks like a guy that's got a bad knee slash back. Great save. That's uh, the kind of thing they're going to have to get this period because Canada must, of course, open up. 
Canada trailing by two. Here comes Howard Chuck. He's out with Anderson and Messier. Couldn't get around Kasatonov. Kasatonov flipping it out on the boards. Howard Chuck knocking it down. Kasatonov ties Howard Chuck up. Fires it around to Makarov. Crossman had pinched in to hold it in for Canada. And now Fatisov flips it to Krutov. Krutov with Makarov. Two on one break. Krutov shoots. Got wide in the short side. Messier losing it. Krutov had it for the moment. Now Canada. Messier to center ice. Messier trying to slide it through. Does into the corner. Fired in front by Canada, but nobody there to get it in the Soviets. Shoot it out to center ice. Fred Hartsburg giving it to Glenn Anderson. Canada changing on the fly. Anderson to Bork. Back to Glenn Anderson. Return to Bork. He had trouble with the bouncing puck. Finally clears it. Gusarov going back for the Soviets. That's Gilmore into forecheck. Gilmore stole it, but Lemieux couldn't get it. Now Hartsburg is shot. Here's Gilmore chipping it in behind the net. Gardner in front. Gilmore shoots. He scores! Now Gilmore cuts the Soviet lead to four to three. На второй минуте третьего периода Да Гилмор с передач Гартнера и Хартсбурга сделал счет 3-4, забросив третью шайбу в ворота Мыльникова. To cut the Soviet lead to four to three. In effect, those goals were separated in terms of playing time by two minutes and 17 seconds. This is an intermission between. A late second period and an early third period goal. And the Soviets have seen their lead cut to one. Soviets clear down the ice. Craig Hartsburg back to pick it up. Hartsburg trying to move it out of there. Hartsburg to center into Patrick. Patrick over to prop shot. Milnikov a save there. Here's Brian Prop in the corner. Now Padota firing it out of there and down the ice. Fior has to play it so there's no icing. Up to Rochefort. He feeds it to center. And then it's called back. And we're going to get a face off back in the Team Canada end of the rink. You're seeing Patrick out on the ice right now, a defenseman, but because of the injuries, he's been on the forward line again here. That play looked like a Gretzky play by a defenseman as he got the puck and immediately slid it to prop. It. You know, the tendency, I think, when you're coming across the line in that position as a defenseman is to wind up and let it go. He made a great play to prop. Prop got the quick shot away. Molnikov was right there. Now here's a Team Canada line of Lemieux at center. Gilmore on left wing, Gartner on right wing. Here's Coffey with the puck. Paul Coffey firing it in. Milnikov steers it away. Gilmore into the corner. Now it's centered, but intercepted in the slot area by Himalev. Over to Priok and trying to move in. Shoots. Fiora save on the short side. Puck cleared, bounced off the boards crazily right into the slot area. And Crossman had to hurry and clear it to center ice. Here's Priyakin, he's checked. Gilmore to Lemieux. Lemieux moving in. Lemieux trying to make a play. Slides it to Gartner. Big slap shot high off the glass. And it bounces all the way back into center ice. Here's Bork for Canada. Flips it in. Batisov back to get it. Gilmore and Gartner crash him into the boards. And back come the Soviets. 
Gina moving in. Wrist shot. Glove save pure. Frostman with the puck for Canada. Canada moving out. There's Messier to Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck cutting in. Howard Chuck put it in front. Off the skate of Milnikov. Brutop clears it away. And here's Homotop. Over onto the left side. Shot right on. Pure makes the save on Brutop. And then was able to freeze it. And we have some action here now in Montreal. And the crowd is waking up as well. There's Irving Grunman, former uh, general manager of the Montreal Canadiens, watching this one and enjoying it, as are most of the fans who have seen Team Canada come to life. And I'll tell you what brought them to life quite a bit of it is putting Gilmore on the left wing on that line with Lemieux and Gartner. All of a sudden, things livened up. Gilmore got the goal. Gartner and Hartsburg the assists. He's a centerman, but somehow chemistry sometimes is a very funny thing, and he's gone on the left wing on this line, and it's just picked everybody up. Here are the Soviets, Gusarov at the point, a shot that hits the base of the boards and then flipped right up over the glass. And the faceoff is going to be moved outside the blue line. Tikhanov has seen his team go from a three-goal lead to now a one-goal lead. And in utter control of this game until a minute left in the second period when a goal deflected, shot by goaltender Milnikov. Suddenly, Team Canada is a different looking team. Messier, Anderson, and Howard Chuck for Canada. Bork and Crossman on defense, and this is Bork. Canada trailing 4 3. Bork to Crossman to Raymond Bork. Flipping it in. Milnikov lets it go. Messier in to keep it on side on the play. Now Krutov dropping it back. Canada with two men in four checking. Anderson to Messier. He gets tied up. Krutov losing it. Back to Bork. Shoots Milnikov to his knees to stop that. And then look at that action in front of the net. Messier and Gusarov get their sticks up. And Messier is going to get a penalty. Now over on the other side, Larianov a hold of one of the Team Canada players. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. Wayne Gretzky just gave Don Koharski, the referee, an earful. The penalty has gone to Messier for high sticking at the 423 mark. And Canada, with all of that momentum going, now is going to have to kill off a penalty. Spirited action. That's one thing way to describe it. Milnikov's down. Here comes the infamous elbow of Mark Messier. Rusarov paid the price on that one, and then he got away with the initial one, but I think the penalty was called on the, the rest of it. So Canada will be short-handed. Soviets have two power play goals in this game. They lead 4-3. Bekov, Homotov, and Kaminsky up front with this man, Fatisov, along with Kasatonov, the point man. Fatisov giving it to Kasatonov. Now to Bekov, the little center iceman. He gives it to Kaminsky. Fires it around in the boards. Kasatonov fired it in behind the net. Rochefort there, trying to clear it. Now Homotov to Bekov. Back to Fatisov. Shoot it! Pure a save, and he wasn't sure where the rebound was. It was underneath him, and Grant Pure just smothered it, playing his position perfectly. I don't think he saw it, but the old line, let the puck hit you in this game. All kinds of traffic in front of you. You have to play your position perfectly. There's Petisov leaning into it. With all that traffic in front, Pure was right there to make the save. A little contact after it as Rushmore came across. They're running that screen pretty well. Rochefort took care of the traffic. One minute, 32 seconds left in Messier's penalty. Canada from the faceoff with Gilmore breaking out. Gilmore giving it to Sutter. Sutter in across with Gilmore, but Gilmore was in ahead of the play offside. And the faceoff will be at the Soviet blue line. Well, the grinders, there aren't many of them left. 
the injury list growing, and all of them seem to be to the top, the top corner type players that you need. But there's one who's hanging in there, Brett Sutter. Gilmore stays out there as a penalty killer along with Gartner. Rossman and Rosebore will be on defense. 125 left in the Messier penalty. 1502 left in the third period. Soviets leading four to three. Here's Gilmore against Semyonov. Semyonov gets it to Samak. They move in. Samak center in. Rosebore got a skate on it. And clears it out of there. Gartner hustling down against Fedota. Gartner ties Fedota up. In comes Gilmore. Gilmore at the side of the net. Doug Gilmore centering it right through the crease. Now Gartner coming up with the puck. Lost it at center ice. Now oh, Rushmore came up and broke it up and then wears it down. Verbukin number five back for the Soviets. To Semyonov. He lets it go and... Makarov had it for a moment. He's checked. And then Anderson held it against the boards with the Soviet player for Bukin. And we get a stoppage in play. Well, some very tense moments. This crowd of 14,588 watching, along with the two coaches who are, I guess, looking about the way one would expect they would look. A little tense. A one goal hockey game in which the coach on the right knows that the team coached by the coach on the left is coming on. Meanwhile, the task at hand kill off the remaining 43 seconds of Mark Messier's penalty. Gartner back out there. Now a power chuck for Canada. Ross Moore on defense with Crossman. Larry on off. Makarov and Krutop up front for the Soviets. Here's Howard Chuck flipping one in. Batisov back for the Soviets to Kasatonov, leaving it for Larionov. Headman into Makarov. Makarov. Gartner ties him up. Gartner does a good job. Comes up with the puck and clears it away. 15 seconds. Left in the penalty. This is Fatisa. Firing one up the middle to Makara. Moving in. Gretzky there to tip it away. Held in by the Soviets. Now Messier is back on. Canada can't get it out of there, though. Here are the Soviets with Lariana. Into the corner on the other side. Makara tied up by Murphy. And now here's Gretzky breaking up with Messier. Gretzky. And Krutop, without a stick, came back to make a big defensive play and break it up. Batisov now for the Soviets. Trying to clear it across. Kasatona to Humalap, number eight at center ice. Humalap breaking in. Gilmore tied him up. And Canada then clear it, but not out. Paul Coffey going back. Round on the boards. Humalap into the corner to Nemchinov. Now... Getting help back of the goal from Priyakin. Big battle back there. Puck still loose, and Murphy comes up with it. Murphy trying to get it off the boards, and Doug Gilmore tipped at the center. Pumalep has it there. Into Priyakin to Coffey. Knocked down, and Messier is there. Messier to Gretzky. Gretzky gets up in. He's Messier. Into Goulet. Goulet cutting in. Here's Goulet. Right through the crease, and now out near the blue line, still no flat on the ice. He was flattened by Messier on his way to the bench. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. There's a guy with a headache. Still no just was level. Here he comes, Messier. There's the elbow. And Messier got up and kept on going. Stelnoff didn't. Good collision. Well, Messier wants a line change. Stay out of his <laughs> rope, fellas. <laughs> he really decked him. Now a line of Lemieux, Boulay, and Tockett for Canada. 
Four, three, the Soviets still leading. Here's Kaminsky trying to clear it up. Now breaking out, it's Fedotov. Two on one break, Fedotov shoots. Got wide on the short side. Here's Perbukin into the corner. Omalov centered one across. Comes to the point, Fedotov drive, and Fiora save. And it's cleared out by Murphy to Goulet, who lets it go as he tipped it down the ice. Fedotov back after it, that's Tocket. And to hammer him into the boards. And the Soviets try and fire it back out and do to center ice. Bork, rink wide to Crossman to Tocket, and to Mario Lemieux. We're booking back Lemieux, steals it. Centered, this is Goulet, here's Murphy. Shoots one, that's blocked. Soviets break out three on two. Here's Bekov. And a good play by Bork to break it up and Canada clear at the center. And in play is called. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. Soviets have just picked up a penalty for too many men on the ice. They are not very good at changing on the fly. It's an area of their game that they say they like to work on a little bit. There are a couple of areas they're weak on. One of them is face-offs. The other is this sort of thing. And what happened was Kazatonov came off the bench and immediately touched the puck before the man coming off and heading for the bench had completed the change. So too many men, and the Soviets now will play shorthanded, and that guy is not happy at all. He's going to get his countrymen, the linesmen, to do some. Now, oh, Aggie, well, the translators are coming in. We're getting a real. Dmitriev, the assistant coach, Igor Dmitriev, speaks a little English. Uh, he's nodding. He understands it. In any case, Canada, having just killed off a penalty to themselves, are now going to get an opportunity to go on the power play. 11.23 remaining in regulation time. Kamiensky heads to the penalty box. Too many men on the ice against the Soviets. So Kamiensky will serve the penalty. Here it is now. We'll see Kazatonov comes right off the bench right there and takes the puck. Now the other man is just heading for the bench. You see him? And that is the reason for the penalty. You can get on the ice, that's fine, but don't touch the puck until the other guy's off. Canada one for six on the power play in this game. With a chance here with 11.23 to play. Mike Keenan sending over gunners like Messier, Lemieux, and Gretzky up front. Coffey and Bork will be the point man. Bekov and Homatop up front for the Soviets with Kasatonov and Fatisov, as you might guess, back on defense. Canada trailing by a goal and on the power play. Here's Messier to Bork. Bork carrying in to Lemieux. Mario Lemieux hits the side of the net. Lemieux again in front of Gretzky. Fanned on it in the slot. Now Coffey at the point. Into Lemieux. Lemieux behind uh, Gretzky. Gretzky centered. Messier scores! No, no goal! They really kicked it in. And Koharski disallows it. I don't think there's much doubt about it when you see the replay. Messier is there certainly redirected it. Gretzky saying, well, he was falling away. Shades of the other night when Anderson scored and what would have been the tying goal, goal against the Czechoslovak team. Now watch it as it comes in front. And the way that big guy in front of him there kind of covered it up for us. But more than anything, he directed it in rather than yeah. kicked it in, and that's the same thing, and he disallowed it. Game's meant to be played with sticks. Uh, Koharski making another tough call in this game. Got a few guys grumbling on the bench and behind it. Still 1.30 left in the Soviet penalty. What a game this has turned out to be. You just don't see hockey any better than this. They 
Faceoff, Messier, Lemieux, and Gretzky up front. Faceoff at the Soviet blue line. Here is Bork scooping it in. Digging in is Paul Coffey. Now to Mario Lemieux. Back of the net to Gretzky. Gretzky in front to Lemieux. He missed it. Bork shoots. Just off the glove of Milnikov and then wide. Coffey to Gretzky. Gretzky in front to Lemieux, but tipped away by the Soviets. And they break up. The car off with Krutov. Coffey gets back. Krutov moving in and Coffey upended him. And Fuhrer fires it up to Lemieux. Now to Bork to Messier. In to Gretzky. Gretzky to Lemieux. Shoots. Big block there by Podotov, the young defenseman. Back to Coffey at the point. Coffey to Lemieux. Lemieux back to Coffey. Shooting glove save. Milnikov. And he held on to it. And then Messier gets knocked in the seat of his pants in front of the net. That was Gusarov who nailed Messier from behind after the whistle had gone. The thing that was important on that whole sequence was the fact that Mulnikov had the lane. He could see the shot coming in from the blue line with no Team Canada players in front. So on the big shot, comes back to the point. Look at the clear path. Gretzky upset. Broke his stick over the top of the net. They're getting their chances, Team Canada. As the pass back is made by Lemieux, here's the shot by Coffey, and here's the reaction by Gretzky. Still 42 seconds left in the Soviet penalty. Gretzky and Coffey over at the Team Canada bench catching their breath. Keenan would like to leave him out there. And there you see Stelnov, who was injured earlier. Was they perhaps on the Messier check? Seems to be in some difficulty. I don't know whether he had been back on the ice or whether he's just trying to shake it off on the bench and has been unable to. Unless he caught his trainer off guard because the door was locked. Still 42 seconds left in the penalty. Nice long delay here has helped the Team Canada players in the power play. They fully rested. Now we'll switch to Hamilton no matter what happens tonight for game two. On Sunday, you'll see it here on CTV at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Semyonov and Messier. Messier gets the draw. Gretzky a quick shot wide. Now Messier trying to chop it in front and it's caught by Mildakov. And the Soviet goaltender held onto it. Well, there's Gretzky getting a shot away and I don't know how he did it. Looked like he was completely tied up and he didn't miss the net by much when he let that go. Right off a of faceoff. He was the one that was redirecting everybody and changing the faceoff alignment. But he seemed to be tied up. Suddenly there comes the shot. There you see the time remaining. 9.59. 36 seconds left in the Soviets penalty. Semyonov on Messier. Messier gets the draw to Lemieux. To Coffey. Over to Gretzky. Back to Coffey. Into Lemieux. Put it in front. Milnikov cleared it. But Tisop tried to get it up. Coffey to Lemieux. To Gretzky. Gretzky backhander shot it just wide. Now Bork to Gretzky. Gretzky in the corner. Chopped it behind the net. Kasatonov able to clear it out of there. And Coffey goes back to pick it up. Now here's Messier to Coffey. Penalized player back on for the Soviets. Coffey into the corner. Knocked Fatisov down. Now Gretzky coming up with it. Wayne Gretzky out near the blue line. Slid it in. Soviets break out. Four on two. Here's Kamienski. The Kasatonov with a shot just wide. Oh, that was a dangerous rush. Now Semyonov for the Soviets. Shoots. Fjord a glove save on that. And he held on. This is the Levant Canada Cup on CTV. Pressure's on that young man in this period. He's had to deal with some two-on-ones. This was a four-on-two, and finally Semyonov let the shot go. And there was Fuhrer with that glove hand of his, which is just one of the weapons in his arsenal. 
8.59 left in regulation time. Howard Chuck winning a faceoff, but Homatop knocks it behind the Canadian goal. Rochefort there. Homatop tied him up. Crossman able to poke it near the line, but held in. Now Crossman again flips it into center ice, and Podotov gives it to Bekov. Bekov for the Soviets into Homatop. Homatop cross ice to Perbukin. Soviets, Bekov couldn't hold it in, and here's Goulet to Glenn Anderson. Anderson cutting in, trying to center. Knocked into the corner by the Soviets, and cleared. Crossman held it in. His shot to flex wide. Now, back of the net, here's Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck trying to get it in front. Howard Chuck does have it. And then it's cleared by the Soviets down the ice. And Pure comes out of the net to beat Kamienski to it. Grant Pure giving it to Doug Crossman. Less than eight minutes to play in the third period. Puck cleared in by Canada. They rule that the Soviets could have played it. Batisov quickly firing it back out. And here's Lariana. Lariana. Over to Gusarov who carries in. Now centered. Here's Lariana. Checked by Mario Lemieux. Lemieux breaks up with Doug Gilmore. Lemieux. Trying to get it to Gilmore. He was upended in front of the net. Now behind the goal. Fatisov trying to break it out of there. Gilmore after him. And Fatisov able to flip it to center to Makarov. Makarov to Krutov. Moves in. Big save. Fjord just got a piece of it with a stick. Back comes Gilmore to Coffey. Paul Coffey for Canada. Over to Gartner. Shoots off the shoulder of Nolnikov. Makarov back for the Soviets. To Larianov, to Makarov. Poppy was there to knock it away. And here's Mike Gartner. Gartner firing it out. Hits Brent Sutter. Sutter clears the prop. Now to Gartner. Gartner cutting in. Never got the shot off. Prop into the corner. Can't get it. And back comes the Soviet player, Priyakin. Priyakin. Upended on a good play at the blue line by Tockett. And here comes Sutter. Sutter for Canada. Shoots. Milnikov a stick save. Now Sutter behind the net. Can't get it in front. And Priyakin feeds it into center ice. Kumalap couldn't get around Bork. Crossman takes over for Canada. 6-12 to play. Soviets lead 4-3. Crossman stick handling through. Broken up and fired back out by Pervokin. Here's Bork for Canada to talk it. Tipped in and shot back out by the Soviets. Bork hustling back, and that will be icing as Ray Bork touches the puck. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. There's the time left in regulation time. Now, uh, we could have overtime. It's part of the playoff rounds of the Canada Cup tournament. The overtime format, sudden death, sudden victory, however you want to phrase it. it depends on which side you're on, I suppose. And overtime is very much a possibility in this game, and I don't think with about a minute and a half left in the second period, too many fans were thinking that Canada could come back in this. Canada with Messier, Anderson, and Howard Chuck up front. Murphy and Coffey, the point men. Here's Messier, now centered through the crease by Anderson. Coffey shoots! Milnikov juggled it, dropped it, but then dove out to cover up on it. See Anderson and Howard Chuck dive into that goal mouth area looking for anything that might be loose. Let's see how hungry they are right now. Coffey let a great shot go. Again, the Soviets had managed to clear the area in front of the net so the goaltender could see it. But then watch the aftermath of it as both Anderson, Howard Chuck, come barreling in there. Gusarov right with Anderson. Here's Messier against Bekov on the faceoff. Five, 5.46 remaining. 4-3, the Soviets leading. Interesting, the Soviets have back off out there. Now he's been tossed. Well, there may be an advantage. Omatov steps in to take the draw and wins it and is able to clear it out of there. Kamensky racing after it, but Coffey knocks it back for Murphy. Murphy into center ice to Anderson. Back to Murphy. 
Murphy fired it to Coffee. It's tipped in. And Perbukin takes over for the Soviets. Just shooting it back out. Soviets trying to protect the one goal lead. Here's Messier. Into Anderson. Kuki На 15-й минуте третьего периода сборная Канады сравняла счет в матче. Броском из-под защитника отличился Глен Андерсон. Передачи на счету Месье и Мерфи. 4-4. Wayne 
Gretzky has that ability to be where the puck comes. He didn't even get a very good shot away. Looked like it went off the heel of a stick. Две минуты и 59 секунд оставалось до окончания третьего периода, когда канадцы забросили свою пятую шайбу в матче. Броском с острова угла отличился Уэйн Грецкий. Передача на счету Рэя Бурка. 5-4. Недолго ликовала монреальская публика. Спустя всего 32 секунды после гола Грецкий советская сборная сравняла счет в матче. Отличился Андрей Хомутов с передачи Вячеслава Быкова. 5-5. Dale Howard Chuck 
chipped in. Kasatone up there to feed it to Larianov. Now at center, Makarov misses it. And going back is Paul Coffey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fired at the center. We're in the final minute of the third period. Soviets on the attack. Here's Krutov to Peckoff. And that shot off Larry Murphy up into the crowd. 52 seconds left in regulation time. Well, as this game has unfolded, we've begun to see some players start to really play well for Team Canada who had not shone in this tournament. Obviously, Doug Gilmore hadn't been given much of a chance. He hadn't played that much, but Larry Murphy's played a pretty good third period here. He's started to come along. As we look behind the Team Canada bench, to the coaches with 52 seconds left in regulation time. Big face off and Canada's end of the ring. Beckoff will take it against Brent Sutter. And Sutter wins it to Coffey. Around to Murphy, but Coffey picks it up and Gretzky feeds it out of there. Here's Brent Sutter breaking to center. Scoops it in. Provoking back for the Soviets, shot it back out. Gretzky fires it right back in. Now Provokin trying to clear it. Here is Lemieux to Gretzky behind the net. Gretzky back to Murphy. Murphy centered. Lemieux was there, couldn't get a stick on it. 25 seconds left in regulation time. Soviets, Bekov breaking out. Bekov moving in. Shoots, pure a save. Murphy the rebound, and he cleared it away. Lemieux behind the net with 12 seconds left to Coffey, held in by Padota. He centered one, but Kaminsky had been knocked down in the play, and now Lemieux with three seconds left, clears it to center, and we are going to have sudden death overtime to decide a winner here. After regulation time, it is Canada 5, the Soviet Union five. Only once before in the history of the Soviet national team have they been in overtime. And I include all of their world championships. They don't play overtime in those tournaments. They don't play overtime in international hockey. Only once before, and that was the infamous game during the Canada Cup 1984 when Mike Fossey deflected a shot by Paul Coffey into the net at 12.29 of overtime. In a game, of course, anybody who watched it We'll never forget. Are we going to have that kind of a finish? I don't think many people are going to forget this hockey game either. Shots on goal. 37 for the Soviets, 33 for Canada. A 5-5 game, sudden death overtime coming up. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. And these are the guys that now are under the gun. Fjord at one end of the ice, and at the other end of the ice, Milnikov. And again, we have to say that while Team Canada, it's a regular course of things in playoffs for Canadian hockey players to go into overtime, even in the regulation, in the regular season now for the Soviets, this is just the second time in their history. It is not played in their league, it is not played in their playoffs, and it's not played in world and international hockey. So if there, you want an edge, and I tell you, there wasn't much of an edge in the last game. It was Team Canada's experience in this department. Something Brad so eloquently put during the intermission. We are ready for sudden death. Messier, Anderson, and Howard Chuck up front for Canada. Against the Larianov, Makarov, Krutov line for the Soviet Union. The Soviets five, Canada five. Game one of a best of three series for the Canada Cup, and we're underway with overtime. Batisov going back to pick it up. In there, four checking is Anderson. Howard Chuck comes up with a Messier. Partially fanned on it, and it rolled off to the corner. And here's Krutov to Makarov, but breaking that up was Bork. Shot off the ice. Here's Batisov to Krutov. Bork back, gives it to Crossman. Quickly out on the boards to Anderson, to Messier, breaking in with Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck picks it up, shoots one, bouncing and blocked at the defense by Casadona. But Tisov trying to clear it, and here's Makarov being hounded at center ice by Anderson. Makarov back to get it, 
Into center to Krutov, back to Kasatonov. Kasatonov, long shot, stick save, pure. And at the flex, up into the crowd here in Montreal. Well, one thing's noticeable, Team Canada is going to keep the shifts short. Well, the Soviets had kept Makarov out on the ice along with his line mates. Canada had headed for the bench and put the leg, uh, fresh legs on. And also, it's clear that they're going to try and keep the game down on the Soviet end as long as possible, and they were really hemming them in just with a solid and aggressive forechecking style. All the pressure on those two guys, Pure and Novikov. That cop wins a face-off. Kamiensky banned on his shot. And here's Gretzky breaking off with Goulet and Murphy. Gretzky centers to Coffey, shooting, and that deflects and trickled in front of the net. Bekov right back for the Soviets. Bekov with a backhander, Fuhr a stick save there. Bekov in the corner, couldn't get it, and Gretzky feeds Murphy. Larry Murphy for Canada. Long shot high off the glass. Soviets trying to clear it out in a hurry. Brent Sutter trying to hold it in. And now it is Homatov at center ice to Bekov. Bekov moving in to Kamiensky. Just off the end of his stick. Canada with Doug Gilmore. Clearing it to Sutter. Asatonov is there to pick it up. Now to Bekov. He fires it in. Rossbore back for Canada. Rossbore firing it around on the boards. Digging in is Gartner. Gartner behind the net to Mario Lemieux. Centered to Gilmore. Shot off. And then Gilmore gets taken out of the play. Soviets trying to clear it. Held in. Here's Lemieux in the corner. Lemieux centered. And Samak intercepts that and feeds it to Lomakin. Lomakin against Rosbor, who takes him out of the play. And Rosbor over to get the loose puck. Trying to scoop it out of there, and he flipped it on his backhand. Over the glass and into the crowd. Well, the ships are 30 seconds long for Team Canada. That line was out there for the Soviet Union for the whole ship. Canada had two line changes during that ship. So they are definitely trying to keep fresh legs on the ice, try and take advantage of perhaps a tired ship for the Soviet Union. Gilmore got a pass from around behind the net here. And this is Mario Lemieux. Always in on it. The puck deflected off a skate on up right at the side of the net, but then he just simply couldn't corral it, tee it up, and get a shot away at that point. Milnikov had come over to cover the corner. Messier winning a face-off around to Howard Chuck. That's Priyakin pinching in to hold it in, but Canada clear it. And Fedotov goes back to pick it up. Number 14, Fedotov, held in by Howard Chuck. Now Canada with Anderson. Fedotov trying to clear it, Crossman. Tried to hold it in, but it's cleared by the Soviets. And Messier is back for Canada. Two Bork trying to clear it to Anderson. That's Nemchinov intercepting. Comes back to Canada's blue line with Bork controlling. Raymond Bork ahead for Howard Chuck. Batisov back for the Soviet Union. Flipping one. Here's Nemchinov. Got it to center. Crossman knocks it down. Tipped it in for Anderson. Canada change again on the fly. And now the Soviets follow suit. Here's Makarov trying to shoot it in. Coffey back for Canada. Coffey flipping it into center ice. Intercepting it there. Gusarov to Larianov. Now into Makarov. In behind Coffey. Makarov shoots. Big save. Pure rebound. Larianov is stopped by Coffey. And that's the best chance yet for either team. First it was Fuhr and then Coffey with big blocks. Canada holding it in. Gusarov is there. Now Goulet for Canada. Larionov breaks up with Fruta. Larionov moving in. Shoots one. Oh, Fuhr just got a piece of that and then it ricocheted up. Here comes Gretzky for Canada. Gretzky circling to get away from Homotov. Gretzky flipping it in. That's Gusarov back to get it. He's not fine. And Bekov, number 27, comes to center. Bekov trying to flip it through. Rossbor there to knock it away. And then Brent Sutter shoots it up. Kasatonov beating one up to Homotov. Into Bekov. That shot blocked. And 
Ross Poor for Canada clears to center ice. Tassatona lost it to Doug Gilmore. Gilmore for Canada. Passing to Gartner. Gartner back to Gilmore. Gilmore cutting in. Number 28, Gilmore centered it. Off the skate of Padota. And then Gartner ran into the Soviet goal and knocked it loose and we get a stop. Well, oh, that Gilmore has been an act unto himself in the from the point where they put him on the left wing on that line, he is, in my mind, the number one Team Canada player because things seem to happen with him. Now, Grant Fuhr, after a mistake by Coffey in the center ice zone, Grant Fuhr had to make one save, deal with Perutov right in front of the net off the Makarov save, and now here comes the other line mate, as it was the guy who made the mistake that started that sequence who got back in and blocked the Larionov shot. And then he got another one. And this one, he seemed to try to snap it out of midair, and it went off his glove. It seemed to drop on him a little bit, but fortunately, it went off the right part of his glove and upwards rather than downwards. Sudden death overtime. Canada and the Soviets. Here is Lomakin after a loose puck. Bork is there to clear it away. Dale Howard Chuck couldn't get it, and here's Batisov. Batisov to Lomakin, misses him. And Crossman goes back for Canada. Passing it ahead for Anderson. Anderson stick handling in. Anderson shot into the corner to Howard Chuck. Tried to get it in front. Knocked away and Patisov has it for the Soviets. Patisov into center ice. To Lomakin. Samyanov to Samak. He scores! Samak into the top corner. And the Soviets win in overtime. What a great shot by Samak. Picking the top corner on the glove side, but a great play coming out the strength of Patisov, and then he looked one way, gave the pass the other. Now Samak will get the pass over the line. They just Maybe slip it through, and here's the shot. Right off the crossbar and in to end what has been just a classic hockey game. Samak, who's normally a center, moved to right wing because of the injury to Svetlov, and he proves to be the hero of the night for the Soviets. На шестой минуте овертайма сумасшедший по силе и точности бросок удался нападающему советской сборной Александру Симаку. Передачи на свой счет записали Семенов и Ломакин. 6-5 победа сборной Советского Союза. In Hamilton on Sunday night. And we are momentarily going to go to the ice service and our post-game ceremonies. Mesdames et Messieurs, voici maintenant les joueurs Labat du match de ce soir. Here are tonight's Labat's players of the game. Pour faire la présentation, le directeur de la publicité pour la compagnie Canon Camera, Miss Mary Mulder. Et représentant le brassier Labat Limité, le directeur des ventes, M. Rodrigue Goulet. Le joueur du match pour l'équipe de l'Union soviétique, player of the game for the Soviet Union team, le numéro 9, number 9, Vladimir Krutov. Il reçoit une caméra Canon EOS. Le joueur du match pour l'équipe Canada recevra un ensemble complet de 12 pièces de monnaie olympique 1988, courtoisie de Canadian Tire. Player of the game for Team Canada, le numéro 12, number 12, Mike Gartner.
Сборная СССР одержала победу в первом матче финала Кубка Канады 1987 года, при этом перебросав хозяев 43-33. На второй матч команды переезжали в другой канадский город Гамильтон. Спасибо вам за просмотр, если вам понравилось это видео, то ставьте лайки, подписывайтесь на канал и увидимся в следующих видео.